welcome back to Mystery's channel. Look at that, I'm out of the maze of doors. I have a new spot. The spot has issues with lighting and I am too cheap to buy a light, so we'll just have to deal with that later on. Today's video is gonna be about the eternal struggle between the gods and the giants, a story that's been told all around the earth. Either it's myth and legend that everyone seemed to come up with everywhere or they're telling the same story everywhere but with different names. I'm gonna read a couple of chapters out of a book. The book is pretty cool. It was written in 1920 and it's called The Children of Odin and the Book of the Northern Myths. This is the Norse version of the gods and giants playing out. Far away and long ago, once there was another sun and another moon, a different sun and a different moon from the ones that we see now. Sol was the name of that sun and Mani the name of that moon, but always behind Sol and Mani wolves went, a wolf behind each. The wolves caught on to them. At last, they devoured Solomani, and the children of the world were in darkness and cold. In those times, the gods lived. Odin and Thor, Hodor and Baldor, Tyr and Heimdall, Vidar and Vali, as well as Loki, the doer of good and the doer of evil. And the beautiful goddesses were living then. Frigga, Freya, Nana, Aduna, and Sif. But in the days when the sun and moon were destroyed, the gods were destroyed too, all except Baldor, who had died before that time. Vidar and Vali, the sons of Odin, Modi and Magni, the sons of Thor. At that time too, there were men and women in the world, but before the sun and the moon were devoured and before the gods were destroyed, terrible things happened in the world. Snow fell on the four corners of earth and kept on falling for three seasons. Winds came and blew everything away, and the people of the world who had lived on in spite of the snow and in spite of the cold and the winds fought each other, brother killing brother, until all of the people were destroyed. Also before that time, there was another earth, an earth that was green and beautiful, but the terrible winds that blew and leveled down the forests and the hills and the dwellings took them away. Then the fires came and burnt the earth. There was darkness, for the sun and the moon were destroyed. The gods had met with their doom, and the time in which all these things happened was called Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. Then a new sun and a new moon appeared, and they went traveling through the heavens. They were more lovely than Sol and Mani, and no wolves followed behind them in chase. The earth became green and beautiful again, and in the deep forest that the fire had not burnt, a woman and a man awakened. They had been hidden there by Odin and left to sleep during Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. Lif was the woman's name, and Lif Razir was the man's. They moved through the world and their children and their children's children made people for the new earth. And of the gods that were left, Vidar and Vali, the sons of Odin, and Modi and Magni, the sons of Thor, Vidar and Vali found tablets that the older gods had written on and left for them. Tablets telling of the things that had happened before Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. And the people who lived after Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods, were not troubled as the people in the older days were troubled by the terrible beings who had brought destruction upon the world and upon men and upon women, and who from the beginning had waged war upon the gods. Always there had been a war between the giants and the gods, between the giants who would have destroyed the world and the race of men and the gods who would have protected the race of men and would have made the world more beautiful. There are many stories to be told about the gods, but the first one that should be told to you is the one of the building of their city. The gods had made their way up to the top of a high mountain where they decided to build a great city for themselves that the giants could never overthrow. The city they would call Asgard, which means the place of the gods. They would build it on a beautiful plain that was on top of that high mountain. And they wanted to raise around their city the highest and strongest wall that had ever been built. Now one day, when they were beginning to build their halls and their palaces, a strange being came to them. Odin, the father of the gods, went and spoke with him. What do you want with the mountain of the gods? He asked the stranger. I know what's in the mind of the gods, the stranger said. They will build a city here. I cannot build palaces, but I can build great walls that can never be overthrown. Let me build a wall around your city. How long will it take you to build a wall, a wall that will go around our city, said the father of the gods. A year, O oh Odin, said the stranger. Now Odin knew that if a great wall could be built around it, the gods would not have to spend all their time defending the city 
Asgard from the giants, and he knew that if Asgard were protected, he himself could go amongst men and teach them and help them. He thought of no payment the stranger could ask for that would be too much for the building of that wall. That day, the stranger came to the council of the gods, and he swore that in a year he would have built that wall. Then Odin made an oath that the gods would give him what he asked for in payment if the wall was to be finished to the last stone in a year of that day. The stranger went away and came back on the morrow. It was the first day of summer when he started work. He brought no help with him except a great horse. Now the gods thought that this horse could do no more than drag blocks of stone for building that wall, but the horse did more than this. He set the stones in their places, he mortared them together, and day and night the horse worked, and soon a great wall rose around the palaces of the gods. What reward will the stranger ask for the work that he has done? The gods asked one another. Odin went to the stranger. We marvel at the work that you and your horse are doing for us, he said. No one can doubt the great wall of Asgard will be built up by the first day of summer. What reward will you claim? We will have it ready for you. The stranger turned from the work he was doing, leaving the great horse to pile up the blocks of stone. O father of the gods, he said, O Odin, the reward I shall ask for my work is the sun and the moon and Freya, who watches over the flowers and grasses for my wife. Now when Odin heard this, he was terribly angered for the price the stranger asked for his work was beyond all prices. He went amongst the other gods who were then building their shining palaces within the great wall and he told them what reward the stranger had asked. The god said, Without the sun and the moon, the world will wither away. And the goddess said, Without Freya, all will be gloom in Asgard. They would have let their wall remain unbuilt rather than let the stranger have the reward he claimed for building it. But one who was in the company of the gods spoke. He was Loki, a being who only half belonged to the gods. His father was the wind giant. Let the stranger build the wall around Asgard, Loki said, and I will find a way to make him give up the hard bargain he has made with the gods. Go to him and tell him the wall must be finished by the first day of summer, and that if it is not to the last stone on that day, the price he asked for will not be given to him. The gods went to the stranger and they told him that if the stone was not laid on the wall on the first day of summer, nor Saul nor Mani, the sun and the moon, nor Freya would be given to him. And now they knew the stranger was one of the giants. The giant and his great horse piled up the, the wall more quickly than before. At night, while the giant slept, the horse worked on and on, hauling up stones and laying them on the wall with his great four feet. And day by day, the wall around Asgard grew higher and higher. But the gods they had no joy in seeing that great wall rising higher and higher around their palaces. The giant and his horse would finish the work by the first day of summer, and then he would take the sun and the moon, Saul and Mani, and Freya away with him. But Loki, he was not disturbed. He kept count telling the gods he would find a way to prevent him from finishing his work, and thus he would make the giant forfeit the terrible price that he led Odin to promise him. It was three days to summertime. All the wall was finished except the gateway. Over the gateway, a stone was still to be placed, and the giant, before he went to sleep, bade his horse haul up the great block of stone so that it might be put above the gateway in the morning, and so finish the work two days before summer. It happened to be a beautiful moonlit night, Svaldivere, the giant's great horse, was hauling the largest stone ever to be hauled when he saw a little mare come galloping toward him. The great horse had never seen so pretty a little mare, and he looked at her with surprise. Svaldefer, slave, said the little mare to him, and went frisking past. Svaldefer put down the stone he hauled and called to the little mare. She came back to him. Why do you call me Svaldefer, slave? the great horse asked. Because you do work night and day for your master, said the little mare. He keeps you working, 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 and has never let you enjoy yourself. You dare not leave the stone down and come play with me. Who told you I dare not, said Svaldivere. You know you dare not, said the little mare, and she kicked up her heels and she ran across the moonlit meadow. Now the truth was that Svaldivere was tired of working day and night. When he saw the little mare go galloping past, he became suddenly discontented. He left the stone he was hauling on the ground. He looked around and he saw the little mare looking back at him, and he galloped after her. He did not catch the little mare. She went swiftly before him. She went over the moonlit meadow turned, looking back now and again to see the great Svaldivar who came heavily after her. Down the mountainside the mare went, and Svaldivar now rejoiced in his liberty, in the freshness of the wind and the smell of flowers, still followed her. With the morning's light they came near a cave, and the little mare went in. 
They went through the cave, then Svaldivar caught up to the little mare, and the two went wandering together, and the little mare telling Svaldivar stories of the dwarves and the elves. They came to a grove, and they stayed together in it, the little mare playing so nicely with him, and the great horse forgot all about the time passing by. And when they were in the grove, the giant was going up and down searching for his great horse. Now he come to the wall that morning expecting to put the last stone over the gateway, and so finishing his work. But the stone that was to be lifted was not near him. Called for Svaldivar, but his great horse did not come. He went to search for him, and he searched all down the mountainside, and he searched as far across the earth as the realm of the giants. But he did not find Svaldivar. The gods saw the first day of summer come and the gateway of the wall still unfinished. They said to each other that if it were not finished by this evening, they would not give Saul and Mani to the giant, nor the maiden Freya to be his wife. The hours of the summer day went past and the giant did not raise the stone over the gateway. In the evening, he came before them. Your work is not finished, Odin said. You forced us a hard bargain and now we need not keep it with you. You shall not be given soul and Mani, nor the maiden Freya. Only the wall I have built is so strong I would tear it down, said the giant. He tried to throw down one of the palaces, but the gods laid hands on him and thrust him out beyond the wall. Go and trouble Asgard no more, Odin commanded. Then Loki returned to Asgard. He told the gods how he had transformed himself into the little mare and had led Svaldivar, the giant's great horse, away. And the gods sat in their golden palaces behind the great wall and rejoiced that their inner city was now secure and that no enemy could ever enter it or overthrow it. But Odin, the father of the gods, as he looked upon his throne, was sad in his heart, sad that the gods had got their wall built by a trick, that the O's had been broken and that the blow had been struck in injustice in Asgard. All right, so that that is the northern legend. The next one is going to be the South American lore on this. On the book that I was reading, I'm going to link it in the description below. It's a really cool book and I'll probably do more videos doing a couple of chapters. I'm not going to like push it out there. I'll just do a couple of chapters here and there until we get through it because the way this guy wrote his book it's in a timeline where it makes sense. It makes you understand why things happen. It just, for me, it made it more understandable. So anyway, that's my video. This is the Northern version of it. I also find it interesting. I'll talk about it in a later video how. In the Greek version, and I also wanna say in the South American version, the giants are of the earth. They almost sound like they are more indigenous to earth than people are fascinating stuff here and how earth really tries to protect them because they are her children more than we are. Anyway, what did you think? Is it interesting to you? And let me know if you guys know, if you guys live in a part of the world that has this type of lore, that maybe the story is different. Maybe also I'm reading way too much stuff into it. Obviously I am not educated in this stuff. I'm just reading stuff and then making my own connections. Do you have your own connections? Let's talk about it down below in the comment section. Also, please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell notification, especially if you want to hear more of the Northern myths. I think that shit's fascinating. Anyway, you guys have yourselves a very great day.